watched him ride his horse right up from the distance. Uh, the opening credits showed Ranger Ed coming in on his horse. You know, he just looked very heroic. I can see it in my mind, but I'm not sure if it was actually Ranger Ed or if they had some stock footage of somebody that comes up, rides in the horse, and then at the end, the horse would ride off because the show was over. But, uh, but I, I remember that uh, vividly even after, you know, six decades have passed. He was the Bar 12 Ranger. The show on KODE-TV featured fictional Ranger Ed Wilson. Only photos exist to show us the cowboy who took kids on a cartoon journey. But mainly the ones that my sister and I remember are uh, the Little Rascals. I think they sh he showed the Little Rascals. It was our gang, but they called it the Little Rascals. Uh, you know, he had, had the horse that come on, and he was a cowboy, and, and he was, uh, and then basically it, it was came on, they'd have a little deal, and then they'd have cartoons, you know. We were mainly there, unfortunately, for the, for the cartoons. I know I liked him because he had cartoons on, and I like cartoons, and uh, it just was a pleasant way to, to spend a half hour. He had... Se uh, the live segments where he would bring things in of local interest. I remember he had a magician on, and I can I, I heard that he was a like a local preacher, but he also had a magic act that he did for kids, and he would come on there fairly often. Um, I I remember that he had two doves, and I remember their names. They were Daki and Dee Dee. And he was, you know, he would just like make them appear from under a handkerchief. And I always wondered, like, you know, where where they went when he put the handkerchief on them and then they disappeared. Julia Stone remembers Ranger Ed reading school menus. You know, it's like he was kind of giving us the heads up as to, to what might have been coming. And, and, you know, if they were like serving tuna surprise the next day, we would be sure and let mom know to, you know, pack, pack us a lunch because we didn't like tuna surprise and Ranger Ed even doing some on-air commercials. He would make plugs, or do plugs, uh, of local businesses. Uh, specifically, I remember McDonald's. And he, he would, uh, like, you know, have a little cheeseburger sitting here, and a little package of fries, and then he would have a shake, uh, uh, like a chocolate shake, you know. And then he, what he would do is, like, he would hold this up to the camera, and he would, he would do a close-up, and he'd, like, pick up the straw and all this lovely chocolate thing just kind of cascading off of the straw and he goes look rich and thick <laughs> my sister and i whenever we got our our shakes we would do the same thing like, Ooh, rich and thick and we'd start laughing so but yeah ranger ed you know he was he was a he was a nice guy we always felt like, you know, he was, uh, you know, just kind of a regular guy. He was handsome. <laughs> and, and I'm, you know, I'm not a cowgirl. <laughs> I've never been a cowgirl. But, you know, he had a charm about him. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a deep voice. He, he was the all-American. You know, that's what you looked to back, and that's a long time ago. That was in the 50s, yeah. even, so. Well, I'm thinking I was probably in third grade, so, and fourth, you know, but we loved it. Who was this larger-than-life man who intrigued and enthralled boys and girls alike? Who was the mystery man who kept them mystified with his chiseled chin and rugged good looks? I didn't even miss it when I had chicken pox. If it was on, we were watching it. I had a huge crush on him. And he was very convincing. He had all of us kids convinced he was a cowboy. This was a local celebrity, and then um, I actually went to grade school with his daughter. And when I found out, I was just amazed. Ranger Ed's daughter, Terry Ann Wilson Williams, digs through a box of photos to unearth the answers to the history that created this cowboy character and what made Ranger Ed Wilson who he was. Well, the story goes, uh, now he was from a divorced family, unfortunately too, and hard on the kids, but his mother left him with his grandmother in Unionville, Missouri at the farm while she went off and went to Chicago. She finds photos of young Ed on the farm, already embracing his ranger look, complete with a cowboy hat. Terry Ann thinks his penchant for performance started in a movie theater. He worked at a movie theater, and back then, at this theater anyway, in Chicago, the 
the uh, they had uh, I would say they looked like little bellhop guys who would seat the people at their seats and he had the uniform on and the the hat and the outfit and everything so he got in the theater that way Ed Wilson met Terry Ann's mother somewhere in Kansas they married and Terry Ann was born in Hutchinson at the time he was a DJ and so eventually they landed up in Pittsburgh and um, he went for broadcasting there. I've got a picture of him where he had a photo taken of him with a short sleeve shirt at the studio. That was in 1956. A short time later, his wife made a KODE connection. Then she knew Johnny Holmes, who was, maybe he was the manager, uh, the, some kind of manager at KODE, I think he was, and uh, she knew him. So she told Johnny about dad, so Johnny, hires him at KLDE. So uh, he may have tried the broadcasting for a while, but nip, wasn't his bag. So they decided to do the Ranger Ed show. And uh, that's how he got started there. They would visit his grandmother back on the farm. Terry Ann recalls a tender moment in a car ride in their Hudson. And I would stand up in the seat between mom and dad. Mom couldn't get me to settle down, but dad could. He'd just take his arm around me and say, now, Terry, sit down. More than anything, I remember that. He just wasn't a real expressive guy in as far as fatherly kind of thing in a way. He just wasn't. But uh, still, he's your dad. His wandering life would finally end in Joplin. But if he had Hollywood dreams, he would live them out on the TV screen through his alter ego, a cowboy character that made kids feel comfortable and safe. He's like a father figure, probably. And uh, his demeanor, it was pleasant. Oh, well, you know, he was our hero, and he was a Texas Ranger. You know, back then, anything Western was like the coolest of the cool. He did public appearances at the circus, stores, and the Connor Hotel, giving kids a chance to meet their cowboy hero. Uh, he's leaning over the counter where he's standing, and he's shaking her hand. This little girl with little glasses on, and shaking her hand, and there's a little boy in the background there. And I thought, wouldn't that be neat if she could see that picture, you know, on TV or something? And say, oh my gosh, that's me. I was a daddy's girl, that's for sure. I like to be a tomboy. I would dress up in a cowboy. That's why I was dressing up a cowboy hat when I was younger. I don't know if I got it or not, but I would have a little tricycle, and and I, <laughs> I had guns and a <laughs> um, holster and a hat too, but I don't, and then here, here, oh, this is a good one. There, here he is, um, this little girl, here he is on a horse, this little girl, she won a contest to ride the pony with Ranger Ed. By day, he was a friendly cowboy. At home, at night, he wanted to protect his cowpoke persona, not wanting his daughter to acknowledge him publicly. He didn't want me telling the neighbor kids, but they all knew. <laughs> That was what's so funny. He lived in my neighborhood, so we knew who he was and uh, went to school with his daughter. In hindsight, I guess he was probably the epitome of what we looked for in a hero. But in time, the myth of the man was demystified. One of my biggest disappointments was when my brother, and this is very classic for my brother, told me that Ranger Ed did not ride a horse in to the show every day, and I knew he did. I thought he was, I thought he was a real cowboy. Ranger Ed's true self was revealed to Randy Turner during a visit to KODE while his dad did some landscaping there. As I was uh, walking around in the parking lot, uh, Ranger Ed came out. And I was a little bit disappointed because Ranger Ed didn't have a cowboy outfit on. He wasn't wearing boots. He was, you know, he was dressed in, in really nice clothes. And then worst of all, he left, but not on a horse. He took off in a little sports car. Not disappointed for long, KODE's Jerry Henson took Randy on a tour of the station. I don't remember much about the studio, except that it was a lot smaller than I thought, because I thought, you know, you have all these TV programs, it has to be a big place. No, they, they work all that magic in this little small area. After writing about his visit on a blog, he gained insight to the show. A few years after I wrote that article, and I mentioned how Jerry Henson had, how, how good he had been to me, and then I find out that Jerry Henson was the one who was responsible 
for all of this local programming that was on KODE at the time. He was the one who came up with the, with the Bar 12 Ranger. He was the one who came up with Teen Hop. Terry Ann says her dad spent time helping host Teen Hop after they stopped the Bar 12 show in the late 1960s. And he would be the host and he would sit around the tables and, and talk to the kids. But his fans remember him most as Ranger Ed. The character Ed Wilson brought to life on a screen came complete with a gun and a badge. That was something the kids could get too when they became a ranger in the Bar 12 Ranger Club. I do know that my sister and I got some really cool uh, metal buttons to wear, badges, and it had a headshot of Ranger Ed, and then of course it was captioned, I'm a Bar 12 Ranger, and we were so proud of that because, I mean, he's a celebrity. He was famous. You know, and we were just kind of a part of that movement there, you know. I had a, I was a member of the Bar 12 Ranger Club. I had a pen that said, I'm a Bar 12 Ranger. They're not alone. David Patterson posted an autographed photo of Ranger Ed on the Facebook group, If You're From Joplin, Raise Your Hands. He asked, who remembers watching Ranger Ed after school each day? Paula Sherman wrote, I was a card-carrying Bar 12 Ranger. And Mark Bybee said, I actually went on the show as a youngster. Ramona Ellis wrote, I watched this as much as I could. Gary Box remembered, Terry had her dad come to Emerson grade school one day. It was a special day for all of us. We got our picture with him in an autograph. Corbett Brown answered, When his original horse got too old, he switched to a new one. My father bought his old horse, Trigger. I rode Trigger in the rodeo parade one year and met Ranger Ed. Mike Meacham posted, Loved Bar 12 Ranger. Sheila Niles Van Tree shared this photo saying, this is me and Ranger Ed. Ranger Ed made kids feel like they could be like him, welcoming them to a fun, safe TV environment after school. We always felt like, you know, he was, uh, you know, just kind of a regular guy. You know, just, you know, not real uh, intimidating or anything like that. Besides that, he, you know, he had his hat on and, and, and we knew he was one of the good guys. They were part of a club that connects these fans even today with memories of the charming cowboy the mystery man on the house who was the Bar 12 Ranger, Ed Wilson. <laughs>